Now, I want to address a lot of people when they're not pressurizing through the pump or losing through the pump, they automatically think, oh, I need one of those pump rebuild kits. You know, hopefully if you've been following this video, you understand why that's not what you really need. So I got this Coleman 425E stove from 1972. I'm trying to light it up for the first time. We have an issue. So basically what we're looking at here is we have a problem with our check valve. At least that's what I believe the problem is. When you pump air to pressurize this tank, it has a valve in here. Kind of think about it like a hamster feeder with their water. How it has the little ball where when you press up, the water comes down the spout. And then when that ball falls down, no water can go past it. It's the same thing. When you're pushing air in, it'll open up and allow the tank to be pressurized. Now, if that's stuck open, think about it, the hamster feeder again. If that ball gets stuck up in there, the water's just going to flow out and just leak everywhere. And it's not going to hold any water. Or in this case, it's not going to hold any pressure in the tank. The way we test that is pump up our tank here. And if it's really bad, you'll feel like you're not getting any pressure in it. It won't become harder to pump. Basically, you pump it up. Now, don't close it and let your thumb off and you can hear the air escape. Also, sometimes when you let off, it'll slowly move the plunger out, pushing back on the air. So, so what can we do? Well, the check valve is very hard to remove without the right tool. Probably just need to clean it. It's probably just gunked up and it's just stuck open. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the pump, and this is not a complicated matter. You're gonna remove this little ring. You can usually take your fingers, you need pliers if you need it. And then we're basically just gonna be pulling this whole assembly off. You can take a knife or something, work it in between there, and the pump comes out. You have this valve with a stem on it. Unscrew that by hand, pulls right out. And now you can see down there the head of that check valve. So we're gonna be using just some white vinegar for this. And this is information I got off of the Old Town Coleman website. There's also a channel, it's got a lot of good info on there as well as resource for information about pretty much anything Coleman. Before we do anything else, we'll make sure we have all the fuel emptied out of here. Shake it around, make sure you get it all out of there. Now what we're gonna be doing, is we're gonna pour vinegar into the pump tube and then push it through that check valve with our plunger here. And I'm gonna hold this kind of upright and pour some of the vinegar in there. Now that was just at the top seconds ago. And you can literally see it draining through here, which means it's going right through that check valve. So I'm gonna let that drain for a minute and then I'm gonna push it through with the plunger to kind of really flush out any gunk in there. Put it in. I wanna make sure you get that last drop out of there. So we're ready to put her back together now. I'm gonna wipe all this vinegar off of the tank. Now we'll kind of put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So first we have our valve stem we'll put in here. Just kind of feel it out. Don't cross thread it. And this is screwing into the top of our check valve. Okay. And when you pump these things up and you loosen it, you're loosening that stem. Okay, we'll put our pump back in. Okay. Put our little retainer ring back on. There we go. And put the fuel filler cap back on. We'll see if this thing will hold some pressure. So make sure we have our valve closed. Start pumping it up. Okay, it doesn't feel like it's pressurizing. It doesn't feel like anything's changed. Put a few pumps into it. Let our thumb off. And all that pressure comes right back out. So we're going to let some vinegar just soak on that check valve for a while. It's probably had bad gas or just, you know, it's been unserviced for a while. Maybe we'll come back in, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. It's been 30 minutes. I went inside and had me a little sausage and egg uh, bagel. <laughs> but um, so again, we're going to have to drain all this stuff out. Let's try this again. So loosen it up. Still leaking. I'm trying carb cleaner, guys. Spray some carb cleaner in there. Still not holding pressure. So I got one more idea here before basically we do the Hail Mary and try and remove the check valve. I guess I can see if I can try and put a wire down in there and try and jar something loose. I've actually got this little carb cleaner. So I'll just kind of put this down in there. And now we'll see if that did anything. Try and pump it up. Holy cow! <laughs> We did it! <laughs> Holy mackerel! Well, I'll be dang, guys. So sure enough, that was what it took. A carb cleaner tool, which really you could just use any piece of wire, but this is a little handy thing to have because you have all these different sizes. 
but we just stuck that in the valve and whatever was sticking it open there closed it so i don't know about you guys but i'd like to fire this thing up now i want to address a lot of people when they're not pressurizing through the pump or losing through the pump they automatically think oh i need one of those pump rebuild kits you know hopefully if you've been following this through video you understand why that's not what you really need if that little rubber cup seal that we have seen about five times on the end of this pump if that is bad and needs replaced you're just going to have a hard time pressurizing the system but you're not going to lose pressure through that if that makes sense to you tell you what guys i am pretty excited right now so fill this bad boy up get it closed up and we'll try lighting this thing up so here we go put it in just like this lever up to light Grab the match and I'm going to light the match and then turn on the gas. I'm not going to turn on the gas and then hold the match up to it, okay? Well, I guess I ought to pressurize it first. It says 35 to 50 strokes on the directions. So there's 40 there. Tighten it down. Now let's light her up. Look at that. We have a flame. It says to turn down this lever after a minute. Add some pressure to it. And guys, we are officially burning. I'm going to turn on this other burner. There's a key over here on the side. Look at that. I'm going to power this thing down now, guys. But hey, we did it. You know what I mean? This was part of a $20 bundle I got off Marketplace. 20 bucks for the both of that. Now, it makes a perfect combo because they both run off the same fuel. And you can run them both off of pump gas. This runs off that white gas, which is basically just very refined regular pump gas. Keyword, of course, being can. Said in a video I just finished going over this 288, which you can check out. The thing with the pump gas is you don't want to store them with the pump gas. If you're just running pump gas, you're probably not going to have any problems. Frank from over there at Old Town Coleman, he did a whole video series where I think he ran like 400 tanks of pump gas through a lantern. No issues, you know what I mean? That being said, this lantern and this stove is going to be an awesome combo to throw in my camper. I'm really looking forward to getting some use out of and taking on some adventures. To me, a Coleman stove and a Coleman lantern is just perfect for that. So check out a video if you guys want to go check out the camper. You can click on one right here. And you can click here. Check out this video I just did on this Coleman 288 lantern. Getting it fired up for the first time. Otherwise, guys, check back in. We'll see you soon.